Here it comes. Are you ready? Ready for the last day and the challenges that lie ahead? Because this is not going to be easy, I can tell you that. We're going to be drifting the track that opened my eyes to the beginning of advanced drifting. The two sections in this track will each ask you to chain every technique we've learned so far without a breath in between. I mean, th there's a place to breathe in between the sections, but not in, in not in between the, not within the sections. So just hold your breath during the, whatever, you get it. Drifting these sections may seem impossible at first, but if you persevere, you'll make it. Before we begin, it's time to upgrade our cars to the, the max. First, head into the pit service area. If you've been practicing a lot, it's probably smart to redo your engine, chassis, and change the oil. After that, use the increase body rigidity option. Feel free if you haven't already to go through and paint your car, change the wheels, add gauges, whatever. Then make sure you've gotten all of the aero options from the skirts to the flat floors, and especially a wing. It doesn't matter what wing. Now head into the car settings and buy these parts. Fully custom suspension. Fully custom transmission. Fully custom differential. Engine tuning stage 3. Racing exhaust. Supercharger. With all of these parts now on your car, it's time to tune. The great thing is that you actually don't have to tune it at all if you don't want to. I myself can't tell you how to properly tune your car. It depends on tons of factors like the car itself, the power you expect it to have, the track, the parts you have on it, and most importantly, the person driving it. Like I said in the last video, drifting is rather like an art form, in that there's no one perfect way to do it outside of a competition. As such, how you tune your car depends mostly on how you want it to drive. To detail even just the basics of it would require me to create a brand new video series that could easily be five times as long as this one. Not gonna do that. So if you know how to tune, mess around with it for a while and find a tune you're comfortable with. If you don't, you can either keep it basically untuned, or tune it like my car has here. I've been showing it for the last 30 or 40 seconds, so just go back and pause the video and look through it if you want. Finally, it's time to go drift. Head to Trial Mountain Reverse. If you want, you can have the racing line on. Get to the start line and keep going. We're going to be passing the initial S-band, going uphill, and passing the next right-hand turn. The first turn in this section is just up this hill, so prepare yourself and start off. You'll want to be low in third gear by the time you begin the drift. Be ready because this first part means everything to the rest of this section. Take the wrong line and you're going to have an extremely difficult time. It's not easy to take the right line either, because of the crest in the middle that creates a bank on each side. Too far to any side and you're likely to get caught in a bank and ruin everything. Try to sort of float across the flattest sections of the track you can, and keep your speed slow until you hit that final turn before the straight. Once you're prepared to transition into that turn, you'll need to gain a lot of speed fast. Your line during this turn is paramount, because this drift needs to carry you at least halfway through the downhill straight. It's tight, so not tapping the scenery will be a delicate process. Then you'll have to slow yourself way down for the final turn. I'd advise keeping to the outside a bit, because this bank can suck you in and refuse to let you go until you've wrecked or spun out. If you enter at just the right spot and speed, this bank can basically carry you through the turn at a nice angle. Up until the end anyway, where you'll usually have to fight your way straight. But we're not done yet. Continue through this straight section and begin to slow down in the tunnel. Get to third gear and around 60 to 65 miles an hour. Follow the line by having your car skirt around the yellow striped section. Be careful of your angle here, because if it's not sharp enough as you enter the tunnel, you're likely to tap the outside wall of the tunnel with your outside fender. Once in the tunnel though, pick up as much speed as you can and straighten out your angle a bit. There's yet another small straight to drift across, and you'll probably want to transition a bit late. Once you do, scrub off tons of speed for the next corner. This part we just did is an easier version of things to come, so it's best if you can get this right. Once you do, you basically have to repeat the same process. Transition and gain the speed for this straight section, then scrub off nearly all of it for the really tight turn here. 
Once again, you need to gain more speed for this tunnel section, just like the previous bank to turn. You'll probably want to stay to the outside so that the bank doesn't suck you in. When all is said and done, you should have both sections completed. If you want to go a bit further, you can chain the last few turns after the tunnel as well, but it won't be easy. That straight before the final S section might as well be a mile long. The only time I've been able to drift straight across it without doing a cheesy little flick to quote unquote maintain combo was with a 700 horsepower Mustang that could just muscle its way through. Everything else shifts too quickly to the inside of the straight because of the direction you need to be facing combined with the bank of the road. And with that, you've completed this lesson already, and the lesson as a whole. If you haven't yet gotten this course down, don't worry, it took me a while. Practice is what's going to make it work. I would advise practicing either in offline modes or in online modes, however, since the physics work ever so slightly differently online and offline. Meanwhile, if you're looking to really kill it in the seasonal events and just decimate the sector drifting mode in general, you should try to always keep your front end just barely touching the racing line. In most places, this seems to get the most points per second without using cheap tactics and cheating. Since we've still got some time to kill, here are a few places that will really challenge you. If you haven't tried this already, you've no doubt been dying to try the drift at Cape Ring on its actual ring. This is definitely challenging, once again because of the killer bank. If you have a car with enough power, you can stick to the outside, but otherwise you'll basically have to be a master of angle, because one degree too much or too little on this ring section will always catch up to you and ruin the drift before you get to the other end. I can't even do this thing anymore. I used to be able to occasionally. It's that difficult. Another fun spot, which I used for the intro video to this series, is Special Stage Route 5. If you've got the skill, you can basically combo this entire track, starting at the end of the straight and ending at the end of the straight. For the intro video, I practiced for probably 6 or 7 hours total just to be able to combo the whole track like that once. It's incredibly fun to drift, but extraordinarily difficult if you don't cheat in any way. Finally, there's Iger Norwand Short. For those of you who are a bit of a masochist, this track isn't necessarily hard to drift so much as it's hard to do quickly. Many of the corners are slow and plodding any way you look at them, so doing them as quickly as you can while still staying on form is a rather enjoyable challenge. It's also got some strange shifts in how sharp or far a corner goes before the end, leading to some interesting transitions and areas where you need to be really delicate with the throttle. With that out of the way, you're hopefully ready to go out there and drift all the things. Hopefully this series helped you improve. If it did, I'd greatly appreciate a like. Subscribe if you just enjoy games and want to see more content from me. For those that just care about sim racer related stuff, I've got a video from last year detailing how sim racers go about teaching people to play them properly, if that's something you're interested in. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Have a great week, everyone.